All right. Well, this might be the zaniest week of my life. It's it's August. Cameo is literally like uh, uh, I don't know if it's if, if I'm killing Cameo anymore or if Cameo's killing me. I'm um, number one every night. I'm staying up to three o'clock in the morning every night, dead, getting these cameos done. I'm doing like uh, forty to fifty a night. It's 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 insane. Meanwhile, I got rough and rowdy going on. The Mets are the Mets are uh, uh, officially announced that they're going to trade Pete, Pete Alonso. If you li if you listen to the behind the words, that's what they're talking about. They're getting rid of Billy Joe. Uh, in the eighth inning for Mr. Brightside. The song that says, Lo I'm lo I might be losing, but I don't think it's a problem. That's the actual lyrics of the song. Uh, it, it's a song for losers. So that's the song the Mets are going to pick now is uh, a song for losers. The only song that's even worse is fucking Don't Worry, Be Happy. By the way, Mr. Brightside is now on my list of songs that put me in a bad mood. Why is Why is Don't Worry, Be Happy a bad song, Frank? Oh, God. Don't I got it. I, let's, let's, let's. Let's take a trip down memory lane real quick. What, tell the listeners why this one's bad. 1988. Oh, no. Frank, you've got to let things go. If it's older than 30 years, I don't want to hear it anymore. NLCS. Okay. All right. We're going. NLCS. Okay. Dwight Gooden gives up a two-run homer to Mike Shosha. Then Davey Johnson comes to take him out of the game. And they're playing Don't Worry, Be Happy. While he, Dave, Dave Johnson's talking to him on the mound. It's terrible. So that's that's the They reason. lost the game, and as they lost the game, they're playing Don't Worry, Be Happy. Yeah, At the end annoying. of Game 5, when the Dodgers took a 3-2 series lead, after being one out away from being down 3-1, they played Don't Worry, Be Happy. It's burned in my memory. Every time I hear that song, I think about the uh, Mets 88 NLCS collapse. Just like every time I hear the song Free Fallen, I think of the 2007 collapse. Those songs... Instantly, instantly put me in a bad mood. You know what's hilarious is the fact that, like, you know how when you listen to horror movies and you see the trailer, and it's always, like, a really nice, like, childhood song, but they make it really bad. Ring around the rosy. And then they kill you. That's the same exact thing Frank is. It's all the positive songs are now just negative thoughts because it's a curse. Yeah, Walking, Sorry, walking on Sunshine also pisses me off. I mean, she's just too fucking happy. What happens when you're you got you know you're listening to Sirius XM, you got Yacht Rock playing, and one of those songs come on? Like, what channel do you I change? On another it? channel, I I flip to the '70s channel or the '80s oh, channel. Okay, okay, all right, cool, makes sense. Another song that really another song that puts me in a bad mood is uh, "A Love Shack" by B52s. The Love Shack, baby. Why? What's wrong with that one? Because they're because it's an annoying song. Why don't you like Mr. Brightside? Because it's a song for losers. And every time I hear it at uh, City Field in the eighth inning, they got rid of a song that was good. And now it's a song for losers. And it sounds like, hey, man, we might be losing, but hey, look at the bright side. I don't want to look at the bright side. I want them to win. And it's driving me nuts this year. Frank, you said that this is the worst year you've ever endured as a Mets fan? Yes. Really, That's even worse crazy. than – I mean, the team was pretty bad in the 2010s, minus 15 and 16. I'm not talking about teams that su suck. You know, you, you I know think it was the suck. expectations. The expectations were high. And right? how they've nuked the team, they Oppenheimer the team, and how they've already announced that they don't plan to contend in 24, 25, 26, or 27. What about 2009? 2009 there was expectations, and they totally flopped. I mean, it was all the injuries. but And uh, what happened in 2009? What event – Took place in 2009. Yankees won the World Series. Uh, nope. I'm talking about what event took place in March. World Baseball Classic. <laughs> uh, 2017, when Mets were pretty Frank, much done by the yeah, end of April after making playoffs two straight years, completely ravaged by injuries. Uh, what event took place? World, World Baseball, Baseball Classic. Baseball. And what event took place this year? The World Baseball Classic. I mother fucking hate the World Baseball Classic. And they said the Mets want to trade, want to, want to contend by 2026. Do you know what event takes place in 2026? The World Baseball Classic. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm predicting right now, none of these players they got in the trade will ever be good. Not even Acuna? Nope. 
He'll be the he'll be uh the Wilton Guerrero to uh Vladimir. Oh god. He's Wilton Guerrero. That's who he is. I know you don't like the Astros outfielders that they got either. They stink. I hear one of them's like five sec is like five six. And every ball yeah. goes over his head. Yeah, I think that's true, Gilbert. Yeah. Name one good outfielder that's five six. They got, they, 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 Jason, remember Jason Tyner? Remember that guy? No. Yeah, the Mets drafted Jason Tyner ahead of people like uh, um, like uh, superstars, people who uh, like like Jason Tyner. There were like five Hall of Famers picked after him, and the Mets chose Jason Tyner. Jason Tyner didn't hit a home run in. Jason Tyner did not hit a home run in college baseball. His slugging percentage when he got to the majors was under 300. He was a singles hitter who was a little fast. And all you, you got this analytic department, which is, which is, and uh, then said, uh, and uh, the Mets saying, we're stand by our analytic department. We're the best. Even though they don't know how to add two plus two. I mean, the Mets analytic department. The only, the only one dumber than the Mets analytic department is that motherfucking goddamn piece of shit general manager who doesn't understand the complexity of an offensive line, Chris Greer. Frank, are you upset? And I guess this question's for Nikki too, but um, are you upset that Dalvin Cook went to the Jets yes. instead of the Dolphins? Uh oh. Yes, I am. I know Nikki left a voicemail for Chris Greer about uh, signing Dalvin Cook. Yeah, I left him a fucking voicemail, and he obviously didn't get the fucking message, or Dalvin Cook would be a Miami Dolphin instead of a New York Jet. It's 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 over. This season is this season's fuck. Uh, the, the the offensive line is shambles. Liam Liam Eikenberg Liam Eikenberg forever. And in fact, Chris Greer wishes he had six Liam Eikenbergs. And also, he some people. Couldn't. He Go couldn't ahead, block Estelle Getty from uh, getting to the quarterback. Can you play left tackle, Frank? I could uh, no, but I probably could be better than him. No, I don't doubt that whatsoever. I mean, I think anyone here on this stream right now could be better than Liam Eikenberg. But I, I, I'm more pissed off about Teron Armstead. I know it's not his fault he yeah, got hurt, but him getting hurt is fucking ridiculous. I mean, like we're fucked if that guy misses four to five weeks in our division. We are fucked. Yeah, it's uh, if he misses if he misses four to five weeks, then you know what's going to happen. Two's going to get concussed. We're going to have Mike White and uh, Skyler intercepted. Thompson, we're going to go. Uh, we're going to go two and fifteen and not have a draft pick because dumbass ge uh, general manager doesn't know what the fuck he is doing. Dude, we don't, he, I, I think we have a draft pick this year. I think we're yeah, what, second round. Time. Yeah, we're good now. That was last year. So I mean, if we go two and fifteen. Has to go. If this team fails this year, if this team implodes, he cannot remain the general manager. If this I am team tired doesn't... of their offensive line being like six open doors. It's like a revolving door. I agree. It's ridiculous. It's kind of been like the story for the last 10 to 15 years. But if this team doesn't make the playoffs or win a playoff game this year, everyone needs to be fired. Everyone. You might. We might even have to rebuild again. But there's too much talent for a full rebuild. But Chris Greer would have to be fired that day. The day the season ends, if the Dolphins are not in the postseason and winning, he's got to go. At this point, having a great offense, a terrible offensive line, with this, with the running backs and uh, that, that running back that, that we got, what's his name again? Achi? Devon A chain? A chain, yeah, A chain. Devon A chain. I hear he's impressing people. I've sign Tyler. Point. Sign uh, what you call? Dalvin. What's with the boys? Oh, uh, oh Luan God. Taylor. Yeah, sign Taylor to one. Anybody? I mean, he's not really in football shape, though. I mean, he looks more like a tight end slash wide receiver than he does like an offensive line. Uh, right I think he's yeah, he, can, he can bulk up. He, can he bulk dropped up. a lot of weight. Yeah, but if I'm him though, do I want to go back to no. the NFL? Like he's w driving around the no. country doing a podcast, making stupid money. Why would you want to go out? He's going to get ready to uh, for his way in 
The weigh-in tonight, well, tomorrow, well, this is going to air tomorrow, but getting ready for the weigh-in. Don't forget, buy r and You're going to see uh, Jenks in the ring. Against how, far, how, how far is the weigh-in? Is it like right, right there? Yeah. Maybe uh, turn the camera a little bit, Frank? Well, no, the weigh-in is tonight. Oh, okay. Where's it going right now? Um, I'm co- it, uh, it, well, it, the, uh, the, offic- the, the, the official weigh-in is happening now, but the oh. staged weigh-in happens mm. tonight, 7, o- 7 o'clock. I'll be with, on it with, uh, with Large. That's why I'm Love here. It. That's why I'm in the arena. Love it. Love it. Okay. So how did One this all unfold? Inch away from did, the ring. How did this all unfold with Jenks participating in Rough and Rowdy? Like where, I feel like this kind of came out of nowhere. Well, first off, I got to say that Jenks is my dog, and uh, you got to make your dog happy. Make Max. your dog happy with BarkBox. Make your dog happy with BarkBox. Two toys, two treats, and a chew. Shipped gift fully right to you. Make your dog happy with BarkBox. Make your dog happy. That's right. We've partnered up with BarkBox. So go to BarkBox.com slash tank and get a free extra month when you subscribe. That's BarkBox. Make your dog happy. Yes. Uh, well, this is how it happened. The Able brothers hate me. Because uh, they're losers. Money. Yeah, they're losers. And uh, you, got, uh, you got one able brother who, who m- might have won one fight. And, I, and, I, and I, there was like two or three fights in a row where they both lost. And I said that able brothers. And, and, they, and they got rocked. They got rocked. So I said that the able brothers might as well call, call them the unable brothers because they can't win. One of them is winless. The guy that uh, Jenks is fighting is Spencer Able. And I've uh, renamed him Owen Una- Owen Owen Unable. Because uh, he's 0-4. And if he loses uh, to Jenks, he's 0-5. And here's the funny thing. He can't win. If he wins, he's fighting a guy who's never been in a ring. He's fighting a guy who's lighter than him. He's fighting a guy who's uh, doing this at 48 hours notice. Because Trailer Park, who was supposed to fight him, uh, when he was uh, uh, felt lightheaded, and they discovered he has some sort of concussion. Oh, my God. Because these guys don't just fight rough and rowdy. Some of these guys go fight in other little things here and there. And, uh, and but so Jenks, who wanted to uh, be a part of this, said that uh, I'll take uh, Trailer Park's place. Called Big Cat. Big Cat pulled the strings, and he came uh, down here for today and just arrived. And forty-eight hours notice, he's going to forty-eight hours be in notice is crazy. crazy. Because no he's training. not a fighter either, so it's not like he's no staying training. in shape. Doesn't know oh, he's, he's in he's, shape. He's in great he is. shape. He is in he's great a shape. dog, bro. Has, Jenks is a dog. Sorry, that's the only thing he has going for him. But if uh, if if Jenks wins, I mean Spencer unable. I mean you have to legally change your name to Owen. True. At that yeah. point, that should be the fight. That should be the contention. Whoever ha- whoever loses has to change their name to Owen because technically. Jenks would be 0 and 1 too. So, oh, well, I, I put it this way if Jenks loses, I, I guarantee you this. If Jenks loses, it, he can't lose. He, he's in a no lose situation because if he wins, he wins. If he loses, he didn't have any training. I mean, if you give him uh, a month of training or six weeks training or however it takes to train for these fights, I guarantee you he'd kick uh, Unable's ass. No, he, he, guarantee he, it. No, it, would, it wouldn't even be. It wouldn't even. It wouldn't even be any question about it. The only reason why why uh, Spencer Owen unable has a chance is because he's fighting someone who is not trained and has never been in a ring. Well, I still think he's going to go zero and five. I think Spencer's going to lose, and uh, <laughs> I think I think Jay's going to smack the shit out of him. And like, dude, I'm excited. I'm excited to see. And it. what's funny is there's there's two own there's two unable brothers, and they both suck. The other one's yeah. going to get his ass kicked by Irish Dave Portnoy. Oh, I can't wait for that one. Is uh, Irish Dave Portnoy around? Maybe we could get him on too. Uh, I don't know if he's around yet. Whatever. Um, that'll be fun. Very excited for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast. Rough and Rowdy's always crazy, uh, and uh, we now it's now it's now it's gonna be even crazier because uh, Barstool is now back to being an independent company, and it's mm. Independence Day. Independence so, Day, dude. This is gonna be fucking electric, 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 dude. I, oh my god. I mean, what are you gonna what are you gonna do? Where 
Uh, I mean, just uh, buy I mean, I, I mean, seriously. Uh, do you really want to watch the Mets? I, 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 I went to the Met game on Tuesday for Edwin wait. Diaz bobblehead day. Wait, wait, wait. Before I, you say Mets, before you say Mets, I got a surprise for you, Frank. Let's go, boy. There he is. <laughs> Let's go. Where's, where's Jenks? Where's Jenks in all this? Is he here? Uh, talking to uh, the officials, getting ready to get Tell uh, him the fight. I want him to beat this shit out of these trash Abel brothers. These guys are the absolute worst. Human trash. I hate these guys. Uh, I, I, want, I, I want Jenks to annihilate them. I mean, and Nikki smokes. Nikki, you got to stop shitting in the women's bathroom. That's disgusting. Don't do that. <laughs> Dude, Go to it, Starbucks. Bro, it was a one-time thing. I it's asked It's a zero-time thing. Don't shit in the it, women's bathroom. There's no label on coffee. the bathrooms, Clem. There's no labels. I, and I was waiting in line. You asked the woman. I was the waiting in, in line, and a woman in the office said, you guys, you could just use our bathroom. So I did. That is disgusting. You yeah, should be ashamed of yourself. Though. Well, I apologized, and they gave me permission, so. Oh. <laughs> I, I, it's always a rule of thumb that you, you, you take the stinky ones at home, right? Like, if you, if, it's not like you're going to know, but you kind of know. Sometimes nature calls, ate. bro. Dude, yeah, where I, I tried diaper. to go to the men's room, Nikki but smokes. Danny Dump was dumping. And I Nikki, had a dump. There was nothing let me, I could do. Let me do. tell you something. I did, did, you're still at the old Chicago office. You haven't got the new one yet. Down the block, there's a hot dog place called Devil Dogs. Oh, no, that's the dogs disgusting. suck, but they have bathrooms. Go there. If you need to take a <laughs> shit, go there. Pat, I what's going on with the Mets? Devil Pat, dogs. Pat, how are you doing this this along with the Mets? Are, are you are you ready to hang yourself yet, or how is this going? It's dragging oh, along, man. but uh, I had a little experience with the losing because I covered the end of the 2021 season. So uh, just wait till next year when they lose 110 games. No, Frank. Uh, They're training Pete Alonso. They're going to sign nobody this off season. They're going to be worse. You're going to be seeing DJ Stewart, Danny Mendick every day. No, no, Frank. We had a nice discussion on Barstool Baseball. You were you were a normal, had good points, good opinions. You know they're not going to lose 110 next year. Well, you did say Pete Alonso to lose 110. I mean, well, Frank I is more right, right than he is wrong, though. Everyone calls Frank crazy, and he ends nope. up being right. So I have to get a tattoo. If the Mets 24 games, games away. 24 I have games. to get a tattoo. We made a bet on this very show, and if the Mets had won 90 games, Frank gets tattooed. If they lose 90, I have to get a tattoo. It looks like they're probably going to lose 90. I'm going to have to get a Mets tattoo on my leg. Wow. And it's all now, because now, Frank was right. Now, here's the thing. I went to the game Tuesday. It was Edwin Diaz bobblehead. I have never been in a game where I was more miserable watching. Oh. I, uh, it was it was like uh, it reminded me of the Steve Traxel game in uh, two thousand two, when it was uh, ninety nine degrees and uh, ninety eight humidity, and Steve Traxel was taking ninety seconds to throw a pitch. Oh. Well, Frank, it was. Uh, have I, I, I was yet. sitting there. I was sitting there. It was nine o'clock. And it was the sixth inning still. I mean, no, pitch clock be damned. The Mets find a way to make they have the longest fucking games you can imagine. And uh, David Peterson couldn't fucking hit, don't play. And, uh, and uh, Doug's goes, he didn't pitch poorly. He only allowed one run. And I looked at him goes, you must be a baseball neophyte. Because if you thought that was good, you're, you're fucking joking. He was uh, fourth inning and 93 pitches, five walks. He couldn't fucking hit this broadside of a barn. I'm looking up. He's got 47 strikes, 46 uh, balls. That's that's not a good that's not a good outing. And then we had that 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 that, that glorious seventh inning with uh, Grant Heartless walk hit by pitch, wild pitch. Frank, uh, good luck in West Virginia. I want you to give Jenks a big hug for me, okay? And tell him that uh, right. I want him to do well. A big hug. Not a kiss? Not a kiss? No, no. If, it, if he wins, a kiss. Okay, so okay, watching, that's cool. I'm going to be rooting Jenks on. Uh, good luck, Mikey. Have a, have a nice week, I guess. Pat, best of luck covering the rest of the season. Nikki, stay the fuck out of the women's room. It's fucking disgusting. Thanks, good seeing you. <laughs> fuck you, Clem. What, he's never been that electric on this podcast. I don't know where he comes off coming like that. Shot out like a cannon. Yeah, he he did. He did. Just probably kidding. he probably took an extra Adderall this morning. He's just oh. all fired up, doesn't know what to do with himself. <laughs> Where do well, I put this energy? It's just like going nuts. 
You know, when you're watching Rough and Rice Mall, you know what you're going to need? You're going to need something nice to drink. And, you know, we have now partnered up with uh, Sprecher Brewing Company. You know, they brew good things with Sprecher Craft Soda. You know, Sprecher is a small company that's growing every day. They're, bo- they're, they're based out of Milwaukee, and they, their sodas are fire-brewed in gas kettles to create a unique caramelization of flavors. Then they add some honey that add an extra sort of sweetness that is incredible. You know, and it's they get with local honey and it's handcrafted in small batches. And you can really taste the quality of Sprecher soda. Then they have a wide variety of flavors. Uh, my favorite is the Orange Dream. But the root beer is one of the best root beers. They have a fantastic cream soda, a cola, cherry cola, and much, much more. Check out the Sprecher family of brands at SpreckerBrewery.com to learn more. And try some... Sprecher Craft Sodas today by using a 10% off code. Use Frank online at checkout. So visit Sprecher.com to shop for some quality top-notch sodas and use the promo code Frank and get 10% off. Yeah, shout out anybody in Chicago as well. If uh, you're a big fan of Green River, Green River was like the shit growing up. That was the soda. If you if you were in Chicago, that's what you drank. Um they are the owners of that too. So yeah, they, they, they uh, they, yeah, the Sprecher Company also. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they they have purchased Green River, yep. and they're keeping that tradition going. Uh, they 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 have a number of great brands. So, uh, very cool. Um, hopefully, when Jenks wins, he can have a nice uh, Sprecher beer as well because they're also a beer company. So, there we go. <laughs> I am ringside. Let's see. Uh, let's see what the ring looks like, Frank. Give us, give us a little twist, a little tour, and he just disconnected. Oh no! What did I do? Oh fuck! All right. Well, we'll you can't do the Frank part. show without Frank. Yeah, this is like. What do we talk about? The Mets. I don't know. The Mets realistically. Uh, <laughs> I I don't even know the Mets like that, so I'm useless. But if you guys yeah. want to talk about the Mets, I'll listen. Well, we gotta wait for Frank. We'll just cut this part and we'll we'll wait. Oh my god, what a fucking! He's gonna come in and be like, "God damn it, what the fuck? This this is why this is why technology just haunts me." <laughs> Here he is. Here I can see him laughing. <laughs> when I was turning it to the ring, I guess it must have closed the window. Uh, it's all right, Frank. Easy. It looks good. Yeah, beautiful. Here's the ring. Looks it's great. always fucking something. You know, technology has been having having a having its way with me this week. I bought I, my uh, camera that I usually uh, film my hot dog reviews at. My uh, that have has, uh, was spazzing out, hmm. so I bought a new camera. I get the new camera. I film a couple of hot dog reviews, and the chip has locked the footage onto it, and I can't upload it to Gmail directly. I have to put it through iDrive which is a pain in the ass process. So I brought the other camera. There's the camera seemed to stop spazzing and it started spazzing again. I mean, it's like, I, I, I put the camera up and it's like, it makes this, and it like flashes, it flashes, it flashes, it flashes. I don't know why it's doing it. Technology just fucking hates me. It's Oppenheimer week. Technology has been at war with me before, but now it's Oppenheimer week. Everything Whoa. I touch is fucking up. I'll, I'll look at it tomorrow. Luckily, you got your social guy making the trip, so hopefully we can figure some things out. We'll, we'll, we'll be and uh, so I have a new drone, Drone E3. Of course, the first drone I crashed into the movie theater last year, was able to get it replaced. Then I had Drone E2, which is somewhere in the trees and bushes of uh, the Stu Finer uh, compound. <laughs> might still work. It might still work. I just don't know where how to get it. Don't know where it's it. at. But it. and now Drony Three, I was flying it over a hot dog place here in uh, Wheeling today, and I clipped a tree and I crashed again. Luckily, it landed on the ground. I recovered it. And it appears to still work. So Drony Three is still up and live. But I think if you lose this one, Frank, you might just have to stop flying drones. No, I, I think you have to stop calling them. Drony one, two, and three. If you have to get a fourth drone, you have to name it something else. 
Yeah. Because the droney thing is, is bad luck. That's where the bad luck lies. Oh. What else should I should I rename the drone? Should I give him a different name besides Drony Three? Yeah, you guys, like R2D2. You guys can vote for a different name. There we go. R two. I like R two. I like. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I like. I like. I like. I like forty. I like because it's gonna be the four one forties for shorties. We'll we'll call the the drone forties for shorties. Well, Doesn't make know, sense. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the 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 audience can maybe uh, send some suggestions. There you go. I like uh, Darren Ruff for Daniel Vogelback. See now, Pat. This is where Pat comes in, and he's throwing throwing million dollar ideas. How about that, Frank? He won't ever hit anything again. Oh, that's all that one got. They got a. Well, all right. Well, you saw that. You know, Daniel Vogelback. Everyone's saying that my line about him being a pinball flipper. (laughs) It was perfect. And uh, Pat, you agree me? His swing looks like a pinball flipper. It does, yeah. He like flicks it. I mean, there's no follow through. There's, I mean, look at uh, and then and and I weigh five. I weigh four hundred and uh, what am I now? I'm, I'm at three sixty five now. Yeah, I was once say over four hundred. Once close to five hundred, but I've lost some weight. And um, I swing like that. I admit it. But I'm forty seven, almost forty eight years old, and. He's uh, a professionally paid athlete. I mean, Daniel Vogelbeck is, without a doubt, the worst athlete I have ever seen. I wouldn't even call him an athlete. <laughs> well, that's why I went athlete. Yeah. Not even the quotations. He's, that doesn't belong in the same sentence as him. I mean. What job What job would Vogelbeck I hear that Mark Vientos went on the injured list. Which is yeah, injury. Wrist inflammation. Who's called up? Abraham Almonte. They don't. <laughs> Ronnie Mauricio is never going to wear a match uniform. They're going to trade him for Jordan Lyles, and uh, uh, Mauricio is going to be the rookie of the year next year. Yeah, for whatever reason, he's fallen out of favor with the Mets. Uh, Buck Showalter is a problem. He is a problem. He is comatose. Comatose. You heard Steve Cohen though; he's coming back next year. Well, Steve Cohen, Steve Cohen, it looks worse and worse every day to me. They trade Pete Alonso. They trade Pete. Where are you going to find forty home runs a year? Where are you going to find forty home runs a year? I thought you hated Pete Alonso. Oh no, it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, the Facebook relationship with you and Pete Alonso. It's just it's complicated. Just wait to a game where Tua throws four interceptions. Let's not talk about that, Frank. Let's not talk about that right now. We need Teron Armstead to play, and then we can worry about Tua and everything else. Let's just let's just get through this preseason, this off season, and get to Week One with at least seventy percent of our starters, so I don't kill myself. It's a good idea. I mean. I think they're just cursed, Frank. I really, th- I'm starting to believe in that Indian burial ground shit. It's the only thing that makes sense. It doesn't happen to any other team in the league except the fucking Dolphins. Uh, you no, know, no kidding. But look, but look at the Mets. They're they're cursed too. It might be the fucking Fleming curse. Yeah, maybe. You just, yeah, maybe you just have to, you know. Well, Nikki, do you know about the the Fleming curse? Have you heard about it? No, what is it? This, oh, oh. Go ahead, Frank. We go through the, uh, back, the generations. It goes back centuries. I had a uh, great, 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 great grandfather uh, owned a potato farm. His name was Seamus. Uh, he brought a, pa- a potato farm, and uh, um, it uh, potato famine started. Uh, I had a a. a, a, a his sister moved to the United States, uh, lived in Chicago. Her name was O'Leary. She had a cow. It kicked over a lantern. Uh, I had uh, uh, Nunzio, Nunzio Velardi, uh, someone deeply and also a relative, uh, about a thousand years ago. He owned a spa and resort in a little town called Pompeii. <laughs> 
uh, I had uh, Aristides Fleming uh, was the uh, Patrick was a package receiver for uh, the city of Troy. Is this all going to connect somehow? <laughs> These are. It, it, go ahead, Frank. Keep going. It's the, how cursed my family is. Like the I the the potato famine, all that. That's that's Frank. That's the all. cow kicking the lantern. That's the Chicago fire. Frank is part of all. all his family is part of all. The <laughs> 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 Anything, Frank. You might be the reason. The only two things you care about is like the Mets, the Dolphins, and the Devils. Uh, my my grandfather, um, he owned a bar in Belleville, and uh, he was somewhat wealthy. And then it got shut down uh, when the uh, prohibition began. Began. He finally recovered his finances and invested in the sh- in the stock market. And uh, one day later, the uh, 1929 crash happened. Great Depression. <laughs> oh my God. I don't mean to laugh, Frank, but that's just fucking insane. It, no, it's even more insane that he concocted this whole fucking. Like century story. Of Imagine how person. bad your sports teams have to be for oh. you to deep dive into your ancestry to see like if their life was worse than yours. Yeah, he got his ancestry test back, and that's what it came to. It's terrible. Frank, are you doing any raw dogging uh, when you are in West Virginia? Well, I did one today and almost oh. crashed my drone recording it to trying to do a flyover to place. I'm going to try to do one or two tomorrow. Okay. Um, when you get back, I feel like I feel like you got gypped out of this this presidency. Uh, the New York office. I don't need it. to be president. I'm already the king, motherfucker. Oh, okay, for sure. Sounds good, Frank. I'd rather I be think, the king than the president. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Dave said you're the future of the New York office. And I'm a and uh, I'm the king of uh, cameo. Doing forty a night. I've been number one on cameo each of the last ten nights. Frank. I don't like. Yeah, dude, that's 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 insane. What well, what are you what are you charging now? 55? 60? 50. 50. 50? <clears throat> Do that math, kids. Do that math. That that's fucking crazy, Frank. You you're insane. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. I'm up to three o'clock in the morning doing cameos. Abe's right, gonna be hearing that. Abe's gonna be hearing my pool shaker at night in his in his dreams. <laughs> yeah, because everyone wants me to do their draft order, so I play the. Uh, the theme from uh, Hard Knocks in the background. I have the pool shaker. I wish they Frank, would number. That sounds like you're doing something else. I'd, I'd watch out with that with that uh, <laughs> yeah. sound effect you just did there. Oh. Yeah, not the best <laughs> sound effect. Well, where do you see the video? I, sh- <laughs> I, shake up the, I shake the pool shaker. I shake it up real good, and uh, we get the uh, the draft order. It's like the Saturday Night Live uh, when they have the uh, the shake weight. Oh yeah, the shake weight's good. The shake weight's good. These are really great shake weights. So uh, I'm doing all these. I'm doing all these draft orders, and people just keep ordering them. I mean, right. let, let me look at my queue right now. Uh, I, I I have my I have my work cut out for me to get number one today. But you know what? I don't doubt I will. I uh, right now I've. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'm at twenty three. The current leader is Cy Iconic with 57. So I have my work cut out to uh, catch him. But I currently have, uh, let me see, how many have in the queue? I have uh, 65 open requests. A lot of them are 24-hour requests, too. So those are extra money. And I have uh, banked uh, over the last uh, seven days plus. $12,033.89. Twelve thousand thirty-three dollars and eighty-nine cents. Fucking make it rain, Frank. Oh my God! Ricky, Let's go. Sign up. I sent you a link. Sign up Send for uh, sign up for cameo. Wow, Frank, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, insane, insane. Maybe you when buy, I get to Frank the tank level baby. status, I'll I'll download cameo. But I mean, I'd be keep... able to put in the work like Frank. Frank is up until three a.m. Frank's cooking. All right, shaking up this is the whole time, dude. It's got to be uh, on your 60th episode or your 60th cameo cameo at night. Oh my god! What's the what? 
What's the craziest ask you've had on Cameo? I've had some crazy ask. I had this one where a guy basically told his girlfriend to stop being lazy, get a job. That they that they're running out of money. And he As still he spent, sent you fifty bucks to make the video. My favorite one. Yes. Priceless. So it's just you telling her to get a job. I I've had I've had ones of uh, someone telling uh, uh, stop following me. I will never date you. You're ugly. You uh, you smell. <laughs> So I am mean. never going to date you. Imagine, like, dude, you're just, like, you're buying this girl flowers every day. You're taking her out to nice dinner. You're texting her good morning every day. And then one day she just sends you, like, a cameo of Frank. Just people, want me to, people want me to roast people. I get that all the time, roasting people. Yeah. So it's a good one. Uh, I get birthday requests, marriage, like, uh, announcements. Uh, let's see. And it's just draft order after draft order right now. Yeah, this is your busiest time of year right now, Frank. Yes, yes, it's August is now insane. August has gone insane. It's 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 crazy. And they give me the instructions. I read off the uh, the names. I do the uh, the shaking of the uh, the uh, order. And it's 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 crazy. And then uh, I'll do like golf like golf trips. And uh, when I do uh, the draft orders, I usually do like. Uh, the uh, hard knocks team, and if there's like a golf trip going on, I'll I'll, I'll I'll completely change my personality. I'll go, hello friends, this is the weekend we've been looking for, the golf weekend. We're going to Hilton Head, and we're gonna hit the holes. Hopefully, we all see in the fairway. And I play the uh, Masters team in the background. Oh, Frank. gotta get Frank on CBS calling the Masters. Yeah, that would be. And and, uh, and, what, and if and if and if uh, basketball fantasies come, I play round ball rock. For baseball season, when I do fantasy, and it's not as much as football season because nobody plays that as much as everyone else. Right. Yeah. I play. Um, I play the Meet the Mets organ version, and hockey. I I haven't figured out yet because I haven't got too many hockey orders. But I got to find something good to play in the background of hockey fantasy draft orders. But you know what? You know what it is? I always bring the hot stuff. That's right. I always bring the hot stuff. And, you know, if you're looking for some hot stuff, baby, this evening, I need some hot stuff, baby, tonight. Looking for some hot stuff, baby, this evening. Yes, that's right. We have partnered up with Hot Stuff Sauce made at XO Taco on Syracuse University Hill in Syracuse. It is basically the best hot sauce you can ask for. So go to hotstuffsauce.com and get your hot sauce now. And when if you use the promo code TANK10, you'll receive 10% off your order. So get that hot sauce right now. Hotstuffhotsauce.com. Hotstuffsauce.com. And use TANK10 to get 10% off your order. Because that's the hot stuff sauce you've been looking for. Yep, that's right. Uh, hot Stuff Hot Sauce, which is in Syracuse. And we will be having Syracuse legend and former Miami Dolphin, uh, Aranda Gatson, on the show very soon, uh, sponsored by Hasta Pot Sauce. So shout out to them again, and uh, great sponsors, as always. So, uh, Frank, I don't think we have enough time to do Ask the Tank, especially with uh, Mike producing on such short time. But is... Did we have no Ask the Tank questions this week? Did you put out the question? Yeah, I have them. You, you want? I mean, right now is the best time to do it. All right, I'll do it right now. Uh, Frank, what is the backstory on why Lindor was supposed to buy Jeff McFeeble a new car? That is from the real Kevo. Well, everyone knows the story. It's it's been mentioned uh, several times. What's Frank's story? We want to know the Frank's story. And Pat Regazza could uh, uh, could actually confirm this: that uh, Mc, McNeil and Lindor have not liked each other from day one. And I think Lindor popped off somewhere. To McNeil says, if you ever win a batting title, I'm going to buy you a car. Because Jeff McNeil drives around like this hoopty, like a beat up old, like uh, the 2010 Honda Civic or something like that. It's like he has like a real shitty looking car, apparently. So Lindor said, if you win a batting title, I'll buy you a car. Well, McNeil won the batting title last year. And Lindor has not gotten him the car. But he is coming in with Gucci gloves, clear gloves, <laughs> and all this ridiculous, like, expensive shit. And it's almost like 
flaunting it to the point where there's like a that looks like there's bad blood between the two again. And uh, it's just another example of how this season has been a major motherfucking hustle fuck. So I, I was there when he said it. Um, it was last season in Philadelphia. We were on a seven game road trip in Philly and DC, and uh, the Mets had just beaten the Phillies. And we're in the clubhouse after the game, and uh, their lockers were near each other. And um, someone mentioned something about a batting title to McNeil, and, and Lindor goes, Yeah, if you win the batting title, I'll buy you a car. And uh, th- this was in May of last season in Philly. And um, yeah, he still hasn't bought him a car. That's bad. It, it, lo- it looks bad on, on Lindor. He could have said he was just joking, but when you come in and you, and, uh, if the story comes out like that, you almost got to buy him the car just to buy him the car. Yeah, he and, said it in front of a group of reporters. And uh, to, to walk around with a uh, Gucci glove, it looks it's a bad look on him. All right, Frank, this one is from Alex underscore 772. What is the all-time team you dislike the most? Uh, it's always the Atlanta Braves. It's always? Always. Yep. Okay. Um, this one's from Mid Mets. Frank, what are you looking forward to uh, mostly during the football season? Hopefully, a healthy season from Tua. Please, please, I can't go through any more suffering. Okay. For sure. Uh, and then the last one is Uncle Red 67. How does Tank juggle being the king of New York, the Cooks? Raw dogging with such grace and greatness, the common man would crumble. I'm the king. King. That's what we do. That's all we have for uh, Ask the Tank, Frank. So uh, if you want to take us out on a song, if Jenks. Yeah, why not? Uh, Where uh, is uh, Jenks? Uh, is, he, is he still at Wayne? Yeah, uh, he's, he's like doing all the official things, probably like. Getting checked out by the people, filling out the paperwork. All right. We'll have him up tomorrow. Sounds good. And, uh, well, I think this song's appropriate. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is older, older than the trees. Younger than the mountain, growling like a breeze. Country roads, take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, mountain mama, take me home. Country roads, don't forget to click like, subscribe, listen every week. And uh, all my memories gather around her. Miner's lady, stranger to blue water, dark and dusty, painted on the sky, misty taste of moonshine, teardrop in my eye, country roads, take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia, mountain mama, take me home, see you next week. See you next week.